Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Minas Academy. So guys, in this particular video, we are going to learn about the Bernoulli's principle. What is the exactly the derivation of the Bernoulli's principle? Its statement, its derivation, and its some of the applications. Also, we'll check out the some of the assumptions in the Bernoulli's principle. So guys, please watch my video till the end. And guys, if you are new to my education channel. Engineers Academy, kindly subscribe to my education channel because your subscription really motivates me to make more of such educational content. So let's begin with our today's topic of Bernoulli's principle. So guys, when an airplane takes off in the sky, like if we look at the airfoil arrangement and the airfoil cross-sectional area, the flow of the air in the airfoil will be looked at somehow like this. Such that the flow of the air that is below the airfoil arrangement will be less, and the pressure generated below the airfoil, it means the pressure generated below the wings will be on higher side, and pressure generated above the wings will be on the lower side. That causes the velocity of air which is on the above the wing will be more, and the velocity of the air below the wing is less. It means the less velocity and the more pressure causes that particular wing to take a lift, basically. So this is nothing but the working of like how the airplane takes off. So that this is the basic principle is nothing but the Bernoulli's principle over here. This particular Bernoulli's principle is applied in this airfoil arrangement. So guys, basic fundamental of the Bernoulli's principle is that when the area gets reduced. Okay, there will be the velocity of the fluid, the velocity of the working media inside a particular chamber will increase. That particular velocity increase results in the decrease of the pressure. So as the velocity increases, the pressure rate reduces. So this particular scenario or as this particular uh, phenomenon can be called as the Bernoulli's principle. Also, is, let's take one another example. Suppose I'm having a pipe which is having a uh, where I cross sectional area at particular section A like this particular section A it is having a higher cross sectional area than section B now over here a particular incompressible fluid let's say like it is having a zero viscosity is flowing through that particular pipe now the amount of the flow fluid will passes through a cross sectional area A will be same that of the amount of the fluid will get passes from section B that is nothing but the continuity equation well over here this particular continuity equation like if we go beyond the continuity equation there is the Bernoulli's principle this particular Bernoulli's equation states that the amount of the its kinetic energy the amount of the potential energy and the amount of the total work done at each of the section A and section B will be same it means if we sum up the kinetic energy, potential energy and the work done will be equal to the constant at the both the cross sections. So like how can we prove that? Like if we look at the conserve, law of conservation of the energy, this particular law of conservation of the energy states that the whole of the energy in the universe remains constant. Similarly over here in this particular system of the flow liquid flowing through a pipe, that is nothing but the particular system the whole of the energy flowing in that particular system will remain constant. So that's why over here the entities like the energy of the flowing water will be like the kinetic energy possessed by the water when the water is in motion it is having certain velocity that's why over here the kinetic energy when the particular water is at rest that is nothing but the potential energy this particular acceleration due to gravity like it will be get added to this potential energy of the liquid. Also the work done, it means like this particular flow fluid is having a certain velocity and it is having certain pressure. So that's why over here the work done will be there. So these are the three entities which are uh, which are very much essential over here in the generation of this Bernoulli's equation. So right now if we talk about the first of all the potential energy, the potential energy of the flowing fluid will be nothing but the mgh where m is the mass of that particular media g is the acceleration of the gravity and h is the height that we can call it as over here we can look at this height that is of the reference height from the datum or it's from the reference line so over here the mass 
is not there. So we are in case of the fluid, the density is used. So the density into acceleration of the due to gravity into h. So that is nothing but the potential energy of that particular fluid. Next is the kinetic energy. So we have the kinetic energy. The formula is the Newton's second law that is half mv square. So over here mass is not there. So that's why the density is used. So that the formula becomes the half mg into v square. So this will be the formula for the kinetic energy. And the last comes the total work done. So over here the formula for the work done will be nothing but the force into displacement. So that is the basic formula if we push a block with a certain amount of the force okay it will be having some amount of the displacement so that we can call it as this is the work done so we are the work done will be in the form of the pressure and the velocity so we are the work done will be force into displacement displacement will be the velocity and the force will be pressure acting upon area so over here the total work done will be the p1 into v1 into a1 so that is nothing but the but over here the a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 that we have seen in the both the cases of the uh, continuity equations so so that's why from the both the sides that removed so that's why the total only the pressure is left uh, and this particular pressure will represents the total work done over here in the formula of the Bernoulli's theorem. So the net formula becomes this potential energy plus kinetic energy plus the work done at section A respectively will be equals to the potential energy, kinetic energy and the work done at section 2. This will be equal and this will be the constant. So that is nothing but the basic Bernoulli's principle. So guys, as you can see, this is the formula for the Bernoulli's equation. Now this particular Bernoulli's principle, Bernoulli's theorem can be applied in different, uh, like in the different experiment. Suppose at your house, if you're having a hose pipe, you can calculate the velocity, uh, which is entering in the hose pipe and the velocity, that is velocity of the fluid, which is coming out from that particular hose pipe. So you can calculate the velocities at different regions in the hose pipe. So that is the example of uh, we can get uh, of the Bernoulli's theorem. Also in a hydrostatic power plants, like water is kept at a higher elevation, and when that particular gates get open up, like what will be the fluid velocity? What will be the velocity of the water? So that is that is the so that can be predicted by using this Bernoulli's principle, Bernoulli's theorem. So guys, these are such some of the examples of the Bernoulli's principle, Bernoulli's theorem. So that like, uh, now let's move towards the some of the assumptions of the Bernoulli's theorem. So we are the assumptions is that the flow is having the zero viscosity, it is having no viscosity. The flow is completely incompressible flow and the fluid is the real fluid. The flow must be steady. That is the flow parameters such as the velocity, density cannot change with respect to time. The flow must be incompressible even though the pressure varies with respect to time. The density must remain constant along the streamline. Friction by viscous forces must be negligible. So guys that was the sum of the assumptions which is there in the Bernoulli's theorem. So guys I hope you understood this uh, Bernoulli's principle and its some of the application along with the sum of the assumptions. So if you have any doubts, any queries, please leave a comment and please do subscribe to my educational channel in just a guide. Thank you so much guys for watching this educational video.